hello guys welcome to my channel myself monica and i am back with a new video so from today i will be making videos uh, regularly uh, with the past questions uh, of the uh, ku uh, about these are the first year past questions of mbbs syllabus so um, uh, most of the question will be past question of ku and maybe uh, the other colleges questions because i have uh, this mcq's book so from this mcq book that is mcq's i am making my question uh, i'm uh, okay i'm i'm solving the question and i'm making video about it so uh, in this video i will not just only solve the question but i also try to give extra point extra hints that's necessary uh, if, uh, to solve this question and i hope that you guys will like this video then if so then please like share and subscribe to my channel uh, please show some support and love uh, and um, I I will definitely be uploading all sort of MCQs, uh, making them easier for you to understand and learn. So let's get started. The first question here is uh, I'm taking the paper of respiratory system that is 2012 paper MCQ paper. The first question here is the this one. This is the, the correct superior to inferior relation of the root of the lung is. Okay, so question says that the superior to inferior relation of the lung, the correct and superior to inferior relation of the right lung is. So you have got this uh, options that is EP arterial bronchus, pulmonary artery, hype arterial bronchus, inferior pulmonary veins, pulmonary artery, bronchus, pulmonary veins, hype arterial bronchus, pulmonary artery, EP arterial bronchus, superior pulmonary veins, hyper hype arterial bronchus, pulmonary artery, EP arterial bronchus, and pulmonary vein. So you can see this question clearly. So once go through all the options now. First of all, okay, so this is this the, the root of the lung is really one important topic. It's really important and it's uh, even easy to understand. So let me just tell you something about the root of the lung. So okay, so first of all, let's draw a this is a very rough diagram, so please sorry if my diagram is not good so i just i'm just trying roughly to you know make a nice diagram so that you will understand so this is the right and this is the left root okay so we are drawing this right and left root of the lung so now first of all we will go to the common feature okay since this is the posterior part of the root and this the bulging one is the anterior part so in the posterior part of both the right and left uh, root of the lung we have this posterior pulmonary pulmonary plexus okay so posterior pulmonary plexus okay very first thing so you draw along with me you can make note like me then okay so then uh, the next thing that's very common is the anterior part we have this anterior anterior pulmonary plexus so i'm not leveling it i'm not doing it very neatly because i know everybody uh, they have this uh, draw, draw diagram uh, on the book ibiti chodas their books you can easily get it from there since i didn't have this book right now with me so uh, i i thought of drawing and making you understand so first draw the two common part that is the right and left lung then shows the then show your uh, left posterior left uh, what is the posterior pulmonary plexus and anterior pulmonary plexus now now in the right lung okay so in the left lung you will just have one large bronchus okay in the left lung you will have just one large bronchus whereas in the right side you will have uh, two that is ep arterial bronchus and hype arterial bronchus so you will have one ep arterial bronchus over here and the hype arterial bronchus over here so this is the one major difference Mo many 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 mcqs are made from this this is the one um that is <coughs> single bronchus ep arterial and hype arterial bronchus then there are the very um, then there is 
pulmonary artery okay so pulmonary artery like this on both the side okay like this on the both the side after that the thing that you have to draw is the two pulmonary veins anteriorly like this it's an anterior part so you can draw it like this okay a little bit messed up drawing but i'm just trying to show this these are the pulmonary veins pulmonary veins pulmonary artery so pulmonary artery bronchus uh if arterial bronchus and then hype arterial bronchus okay so after that uh so here you can have some lymph vessels and lymph nodes so that's all so the other question was here the correct okay the correct superior to inferior relation of the root of the right lung that means from superior to inferior relation what were the structures present so just take a straight line okay here also you can take a straight line and now you can see what are the structure present first ep arterial bronchus pulmonary artery hype arterial bronchus and the uh, inferior pulmonary vein isn't it and here what you can see is the um pulmonary artery then okay the bron bronchus is also included so bronchus and the inferior pulmonary vein see in that way you usually go to this posterior side you know make a straight line uh from here so you have to include this uh, bronchus burden in this posterior um pulmonary plexus too so in this way this is structures that has been passed here so this they are the uh, from uh they have these these are from above downwards okay the right side and the left side so the quite superior and inferior relation of the root of lung right lung is ep arterial bronchus pulmonary artery hype arterial bronchus and pulmonary vein i think you have understood till now ep artery pulmonary artery hype arterial and inferior pulmonary vein so this was the solution for question number 1 I made this uh, long this uh, this description long because I know I think it's very essential for us to understand it deeply. It's not just about mugging up. It's also about understanding what the question meant to say and how we should read. So the next thing is the which is wrong regarding the apices of the lung. So, uh, you know it lies in the root of the neck. That's also true. It lies just above the uh, two centimeter above clavicle, covered by cervical pleura. That's also right. Uh, stabilized by the Simpson's fascia. That's also right. And apices of the lung is the most movable part of the most movable part. That's not right. Okay. So, so here the um. And the uh, the uh, option number C that is option number A that is apices of the lung is the more mo movable part is the uh, wrong uh, uh, regarding the apices of the lung. Now the third question that is surfactant synthesis occurs in there is pseudo gang uh, pseudo uh, glandular period, canalicular period, terminal sac, uh, sac period, and alveolar period. So I'm not describing about them because that this this um this question okay the uh, the MCQ that has come in question number three. So uh, surfactant synthesis is important. Whatever it is in your physiology book, uh, that you read after above there in the book also there was nothing written about this terminal sac period and anything. So I just like to answer you that the uh, the answer of this uh, third number question is terminal uh, shack period so that's the answer so i can show you the so it's just genuine answers because the answer key are here and we can see that's the question number three has got c so is the uh, terminal uh, shack period so which of the following anti-tubercular drugs do not crosses the uh, the third question here it is the which which uh, of the following anti tubercular drugs do not close the broad brain barrier. So, um, uh, which of the following anti tubercular drugs do not close the broad brain barrier? And we have the options if I'm piscine, isoniazid, ethambutol, and streptomycin. So, uh, for this, let's go. Sorry, it's just good. So, for this, let me tell you that, uh, you know, um, uh, 
this streptomycin the first we should know about the antitubercular drugs okay antitubercular drugs which are p r okay i j e pyrazine amide okay rifampicin uh, isoniazid so just i'm writing and then after this as okay sorry it's streptomycin and then ethambutol so you can remember this anti-tubercular drugs from from this mnemonic so i'm so sorry for my handwriting i hope you are understanding them so which of the following anti-tubercular do not cross the blood brain barrier so you know among this drug the streptomycin which is um the answer okay streptomycin is highly ionized drug okay so highly ionized means that it is water soluble and water soluble means it can be readily extruded from the urine and even to cross uh, the blood brain barrier you need to be lipid soluble which it is not so because of that reason so the correct answer for the question number four is the streptomycin that do not cross the blood brain barrier because of its highly ionic property now question number five ectotoxins are produced by corine bacterium species are lysogenized by beta phase so t2 phase t4 phase beta phase and alpha phases are here so to know the answer question number five we have to watch my video on corine bacterium diphtheri which i have made so go and watch that video on my microbiology playlist uh, in my channel and definitely you can understand about it so to just uh, reduce the time uh, i i'm not describing about it so you can watch this video this um answer in an uh corona bacterium video so the, let's move to the question number six so which of the following has the highest hepatotoxic potential so um what i suggest here is once you can go through the uh adverse effect of all of these drugs then you can see that um that uh, the adverse uh, that uh, adverse effect the most uh, highest hepatotoxic potential it is with isoniazid so the major three okay so your so, so the three major adverse effect of the uh, isoniazids are the first one it is the uh, peripheral neuropathy and then it is hepatotoxicity and the third one there was it was this um hypersensitivity okay so this was the answer so uh okay here uh, the in the question bank it is given question number um, answer number um, this uh, D as the correct answer, but uh, by looking at my teacher's notes and everything, I think uh, the question number C, that is streptomycin, is the better answer for this question. So I am telling you streptomycin, streptomycin, but if you think that pyriz uh, if pyrazinamide is right, then you can comment in down the comment section. So now let's move into question number seven. That is, which of the following does not have the antioxidant property? So now i will uh, show you uh, the few um examples of the antioxidants so vitamin a vitamin c vitamin e catalyst the thine peroxidase superoxide dismutase uric acid beta carotene these all are the examples of antioxidant so i i want to suggest you that in your fast track or in your book you have this proper antioxidant system chapter where you have this classification of antioxidant which i'm not describing here because it will just uh, in, uh it will just um you know uh, be very big for this uh video you and uh, we have to cover a lot of things so uh, you go there and you study the classification of antioxidant system is very very important and it's even easier to understand so i have just listed the names that is vitamin a so you might you might know that vitamin c and vitamin e are antioxidant but you might get confused with vitamin a so vitamin is also antioxidant it helps to keep your skin healthy uh, eyes healthy so it's also an antioxidant but vitamin b is not an antioxidant so the correct answer is vitamin c that is vitamin correct answer is c that is vitamin b1 now the next question is the bromo